Hey folks, it's Grimwit from Natch Evil. We're playing Casual Truck. With me today is Jet. Yes, he finally got a part. Say hello, Jet. Jet Rock! <laughs> I'm betting that this, uh, this very loud truck kind of stepped over you. Could you repeat that? Hello, Jet. Magic Truck! Magic Truck. Casual Truck. The casual truck is magic. Whoa. Can I buy your casual truck? Casual truck! Casual truck! Oh man, that's such a good theme song. Yes. Alright, uh, where was I? Okay, today's question is... I, I love this, I, I wanted to keep it generic. What makes okay. you, you? It is a question of... What is identity? Wow. Yeah. That is certainly a question. <laughs> it's certainly a kind of question. Holy shit, I'm going the wrong way. Um, I, I, I know that, um, well, I think that from a very early age, I know I was different. Not like I, I'm from a different world. No, no. But I, I think thought differently. I thought darker. I thought kind of like I, I thought it, like a, a member of the Adams family. So, is it the, I mean, is it the way that you think that's different? Because I know a lot of people don't always think the same after ages and ages. Like, what if you learn something new? Wait, Adam's family? Who doesn't want to think like the Adam's family? A lot of people. I liked the Adam's family. I thought they were a great family. They weren't weird or anything. Well, they are weird, but there's another thing about the Adam's family. They are, um... They are considered, despite their kind of uh, darkness, the, the Adams family is like a very good family. Yes. They support each other in yes. through thick and thin, no matter what. Indeed. In fact, they're probably the most psychologically stable family in sitcom history. Indeed. Indeed. Yes. There are three, well, at least three people I identified with. Ugly. Ms. Adams. <laughs> really? You would you identify with Morticia? Gomez. Oh, Mr. Adams. Sorry, I thought you said Mrs. How does Gomez sound like Mrs.? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Groucho Marx. Wait, Groucho Marx was in the Adams family? <laughs> no, these are people who I identify with. <laughs> I was like... Holy shit, that's fucking awesome! I'd watch that show! Well, it'll be in your dreams. And the last person I identify with, who is also my favorite Muppet, Gonzo the Great. Um, you know what? I'm gonna have to agree with you on all three of these, although I wanted to be... Uh, I didn't want to be Gonzo, although I certainly identified with him. I've always wanted to be Groucho Marx. I don't think mm. I can be Groucho Marx. No, I don't, have, I don't have his wit. I don't think anyone has his wit. No, his, his is a pretty rare, rare wit. I'm trying to think of anybody who even is remotely like Groucho Marx. And the problem is, his training was unique. You, vaudeville training, yeah. Well, not, not just vaudeville. Anybody can be. There, there were lots of vaudevilles. But, no, but not everybody had his brothers. And I believe it is his brothers that made Groucho Marx Hmm. Because they were, yeah, well, they were always trying to one up each other and throw each other off, and it, they they all forced each other to adapt, like to, brothers would. Yeah, but more so because there's so many of them. How many were there? There were six, weren't there? Only yeah. five of them in show business and four of them on screen. Well, I thought there was four in show. Oh, okay. No, uh, Gummo it was in show business with them, but he never showed up on screen. So that's five, and there was a sixth, which I believe was a sister? Something like that, I think. They, they had big families back then. They had to fill up the world at the time. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I like to fill the world up with my hateful, hateful hate. Why do you do that, man? Whenever you say hate, you know you mean love. That's what I mean. <laughs> I it's my love. Let me show it. My love stomps. <laughs> My lovely lady lumps. Oh. Oh, man. 
I'm still geeking out over how awesome uh, the Life and Times Billy Demise was when it ended. I have no idea what that is. It, it was a Let's Play, but it was so much more than a Let's Play. It was a single narrative that spanned five games done by Super Great Friend, and I've never seen anything like it on, on in Let's Plays or in, on the internet. It was truly unique. Ah. And, it, and it's so good. So good. So good. I laughed. I cried. I kissed... <laughs> Bully demise goodbye. <laughs> Left, I cried, I hurled. Let's see, I'm doing one kilometer over the speed limit now, and Oh. Nope, nope, they didn't dock me any any pay. Good. Ah. Oh, someone else I identify with? Yeah. Uh Craig first. Every, you know, I I don't think I'd ever want to be Craig Ferguson, but I would love to meet. I would like Craig to hang Ferguson. out with him. Yes. Share a non-alcoholic beverage since he doesn't drink anymore. Yeah, I could do that. Although I would prefer to be drunk. Because he's 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 uh. Well, well no, you know what? You well, know. he's reformed. Yeah. Reformed. Yes. Uh, Indeed. interesting. Like I don't even know <clears throat> if that counts. Um, whoa, because I uh, I had a, a discussion with Jody after the show was recorded about whether or not heartbreak counts as tragedy. And what does I, I'm. What have to do with Craig Ferguson? Well, hang on. Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, well, uh, it's along the same lines. I'm not sure if alcoholism counts as tragedy, because I think in both cases you are actually in control of the bad things that happen to you. No, in the not. case of alcoholism, you know, you have the will to not do something. Well. Not doing things is pretty easy, and, this, and then in the case of heartbreak, it might be a little less so, but you have the will to not be involved with that person. I think you're wrong, because it, it's an addiction. Like, cocaine is an addiction. You get addicted, and it's very hard to stop doing it. Well, I would not say that alcohol is as addictive as fucking cocaine. But it's but, still a drug, and it's still addictive. Well, people. it's a habit. It's just a habit. And you, what you're getting addicted to is not the the uh, chemical itself. It's not a physical addiction. It's a mental one. See, you're you're still wrong because I know people personally who are addicted to the chemical, to oh. the alcohol itself. Yeah, me too, man. My dad was an alcoholic. My grandpa died from alcoholism. He got liver poisoning. But it's still the same old thing. It's it's the willpower to not do something, and there's it's well, it's psychological. About, I'm not you saying say that it's about you know eating a thousand cheeseburgers every day. You could say that about being fat. You have the willpower to be fat. Well, yeah, that's exactly right. It's I'm not saying it, it isn't an illness in a form, but it isn't a physical illness. I think that's what you're, exactly. Well, I'm it saying that... Because it hurts your body. Well, what I'm saying, though... Well, yeah, it hurts your body. Jesus Christ, but... And it hurts others' bodies if, if you're... Well, so does stabbing, but I don't constantly stab my leg because I'm addicted to it. Whoa, 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 whoa. How does sex hurt yourself? Uh, Unless what? Unless you're in a BDSM. Sex? What? No, let's move what? on. <laughs> All right, my, my question isn't... My, my question isn't whether or not it's an addiction anyway i i don't really think it is but even addiction let's, let's move on then. oh uh, month is month is sending me a message and i'm ignoring it because i'm driving <laughs> <laughs> well it's that question of whether or not things that you're in control of count as a tragedy and I, i'm sorry you're in control of whether or not you're an alcoholic i i disagree the reason I say that you're in control is I've seen the statistics of how many people survive alcoholism and move on with their lives. And you, I mean, those people tend to be stronger on the other side of that addiction. Take, for example, Chris Hardwick, who I, I know you don't like. I like Chris Hardwick. And one of the things that he and Craig Ferguson share in common is they both drunk, drank themselves to death. They both were on that edge where they were equally as happy, you know, 
drinking as waking up in a dumpster every morning. They just didn't care anymore. Right, they, they stopped caring, and both of them climbed out of that pit. But it's 5%. 5% is the number of people who survive alcoholism. That's, that's 5% with or without any help, as far as I've ever seen. That's a pretty low percentage, but does that count as tragedy? What does it have to do with tragedy at all? Why, why did that come up? Well, it came up with Jody because I was discussing how difficult it is to be a strong person without having a tragedy to overcome. Like, most great people come from tragedy, and I've, I've discussed this before on my comic as well. It's just, I, whenever I see great people or inspirational people, although I told her you can't be an inspiration unless you have cancer or have lost a limb, but I was joking with that. Uh, you, surviving tragedy is how, how most people end up becoming a great person. And I think it has to do with once they've overcome that great obstacle, then they can't stop overcoming and they overcome all the other obstacles that normal people have to deal with like becoming successful doing you know writing that novel finally uh you know getting in contact with people in showbiz and you know saying devil may care to what happens whether they say yes or no you know um so she said that i have overcome a tragedy i've overcome just a ton of heartbreak and I, first off, I don't really agree that I've overcome heartbreak, which led to that, that video I made. But I also don't believe that heartbreak is a tragedy. That's why it came up. So identity, huh? <laughs> so identity. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I really don't like the status quo. The status quo sucks. The status quo will always suck. The status quo will always be for the lowest common denominator. Right. The quote-unquote normals. Trainless, as it were. Not not in a gay, well, not in a gay, uh, straight way. Just as in the, the straight-laced people. Well, I'm below normal, so I can't complain too high, too too much about it. I don't know what that means, but okay. I I don't make any any money. Most people make money. All all I make are. Comics, well, you stories, know what? That's not videos. what I meant. Well, no, I'm, I'm not making money. Well, you don't like the status quo. I'm, I'm with you, but I'm, I'm the wrong way. I don't know. Self-deprecation too much. I'll shut up. No, just, just a really bad joke that makes no sense. It's not even a joke. That's what makes it worse. Oh, oh no. Okay, let's see if I can pull this curve at 110 kilometers an hour. Do it. <laughs> do, do it. it. Do it. Do it. I'm gonna end up crashing into this car in front of me, but I'll do it, man. Jedi mind powers. Jedi mind powers activate. Oh god. Oh. Oh. Oh shit. Oh shit. Shit. No. 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 Wait. 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 Oh, that was smooth as fuck. Yeah. All right. Ooh, smooth as a baby's butt cheek. <laughs> Move car. Move car. Move faster. All right. Good. This, this game can be a lot of fun if you're willing to just, you know, say, fuck it, and crash into things. <laughs> Move, car. Move that car. Uh, I have picked each of these uh, jobs so that they are under 30 minutes of drive time, and I figured that'll be a, a nice episode length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you can edit it from there. I, I do very little editing. I'm, I'm doing this very casually. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. This is on your internet box right now. Wee, internet box. <laughs> also, we're going to see if you cut out, because Skype cut uh, Chuck, Chuck out a couple of times when I talked to him last. Well, that's not good. You keep cutting out. Do I? Sometimes, sometimes. It, it might... I get the gist of your sentences. Well, I can't tell if it's my internet or if it's Skype anymore. It's probably Skype. I hear that problem with other people on Skype. Yeah. yeah. You know who I haven't talked to in a while? And I think he's mad at me. Michelle. No, he's just busy working. Mm -hmm. I talked to him once 
earlier, like just chatting with him, and what I do you don't mean by earlier today. No, no, like a couple weeks back, and I, I don't know. He, he seemed mad at me because you're probably not doing the comic anymore. Well, I was. You're a lazy guy who's not doing his comics, and he really wants to start voice acting again. I, I'm actually just as busy as I ever was, and have kind of. I'm trying to get over some. The, the biggest obstacle with doing any kind of artwork is believing that it's worth doing. Because if you believe, as so many people tell you, that it's a waste of time, then that's the way you treat it. And so you, you want to do it, but you can't because it's a waste of time that you that should be doing, spending on other things. But, but you still want to do it, and you want to make your life something that you're doing with it. And, and it's it's a lot of bullshit on top of a lot of bullshit. Seems like it. Big old bags of bull poop. Gigantic bags of bull poop. What are you doing <laughs> with your life? What do I do with my life? Yeah, what do you do with your life? Because I, I take care of Queenie and I try to do comics. What do you do with your life? Should have to desperately try to find a job in a 8.1% unemployment rate uh, town. So you are... Missing ninety-two percent, roughly. You're, you're, you're trying to get into the ninety-two percent. I guess whatever. Just checking. I'm just trying to find a job, man. Well, I mean, you can always make a job. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, that's not gonna fly. You know it. Well, it won't fly because you think it's a waste of time. Same problem I no, got. No, it's not that. No, because it's not gonna pay what I need to be able to live on my own, and not in a cardboard box. Well, it, it'll pay more than what, you're, what it's paying now. No, it won't. Okay. I make $5 a month more than you do, because I make $5 a month. <laughs> Start watching his videos, dammit. <laughs> he needs some money. He's got a pregnant baby on the way with a pregnant baby. What? No, what? no. <laughs> He's my baby, a... my baby is going to be born, and then immediately afterwards, that baby is going to have a baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a sick Uncle Jemima pant, Uncle Baby, and he needs your money. My wife is no. I'm still stuck on this whole thing because now I want to add cannibalism to the mix. So, <laughs> they're, so they're, I need money because his, his uh, Uncle Baby. Because my wife is about to have a child that we're going to call Deborah. Deborah's going to have a child that we're going to call dead meat, and <laughs> Deborah's going to eat dead meat. We, we're, man, oh god. Oh! See, oh. this is what I mean by not being normal. This is the way I think, man. Carry on. <laughs> it's, I think it's also a dude in a park to the ADHD. Eh. Attention deficit disorder. I, I know what ADHD is. I've Do been you? diagnosed with it before. Have you? Yes. Have you been on the Ritalins? Yes, and then I stopped. What did you think of it? My problem with Ritalin is the psychological aspect of it. When I was a kid, I took Ritalin, and this incidentally was before it was called ADHD. It was called hy hyperactive syndrome or some bullshit like that. And I began to notice that I would act a certain way if I did not take the drug and I didn't like the fact that I had attached a psychosis to the drug. So I stopped taking it and was better for it. See, I didn't... that didn't happen to me. I just was able to focus more. I... Honestly, I was able to focus better, but I didn't think it was worth my identity, and that's that's something that stuck with me. Do you See, still, I still take have my identity, but I wasn't. My my hyperactiveness was so bad that, that in preschool, I, I you couldn't have me sit down in a chair. I'd be running around like a maniac and oh yeah, uh, doing it, shit and being destruct, uh, destructive because yeah. I couldn't help it. Well, the real the real ADHD. That's that's what happens. I mean, I remember when I was in middle school, I would pick a spot on the floor and walk around it, as t in as tight a circle as I could, so I could drive myself dizzy. 
But it was actually because I couldn't hold still. But yeah. There we go. All right. Yeah, kids, kids these days, I don't. <laughs> kids these days, don't start, man. Because there will I... always be kids these days. Patience these days, I don't think it is at the level of what they think. No, it's like I, there, diabetes. There is a it's disease. Over it's overdiagnosed. There is a mental, chemical thing going on in your brain. It's just, I, I don't, I don't know. It just doesn't seem as I, likely. Sure an issue that everybody makes it out to be? Correct. Yeah. Speaking from experience from this person who is actually it, they don't seem that bad. There's uh. a difference being a, just a kid and the difference being having your having a disease. Well, I guess everybody's got their obstacles that they overcome in their own way, whether it's a tragedy or not. And on that bombshell, it's time to wrap up. But I wanted to talk more. Well, you can talk more with me after the show. Okay. <laughs> Say goodnight, Jet. Good night, Jet. Come come see my uh my show tomorrow night. Oh. Oh shit. Dude, I think I may have to I may have to post this next week's Thursday in order for that to happen because there's no way I'm going to get this up in time for them to That's see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Make sure you have a link up to jetblackstreamtime.com. He's making me do it. Good night, folks. Push your arm. Good night. Good night, Wisconsin.